masterpiece built in 1929 by renowned musician and composer Frank LaForge. It came on the market for the very first time in 1994 when it was purchased by artist and marketing executive Glenn Hoffman. He spent three years artfully restoring and updating this magnificent stone home. Today it's back on the market for just over seven million dollars. This 8,000 square foot home sits on five acres overlooking Gorham's Pond. It was inspired by the grandeur of European homes visited by the LaForges during their travels. On those visits, they collected architectural artifacts that give the home its character. From the moment you enter this home, it's evident that the current owner has taken an artful and eclectic approach to restoring this unique home, one the LaForges would certainly approve of. Let's meet the owner, Glenn Hoffman. And this was built in 1929-30. They were not building houses like this. They actually had to find people who could build it in the old style. It was built during uh, the time of the Depression. They actually brought in stonemasons from uh, Europe to build these two-foot stone granite walls. The ceilings, as, as you can see, are beams from an old barn. They've had a, a life somewhere else here in Connecticut or New England. And uh, today they make up uh, our, our ceiling. Up above here, we have um, the organ loft. The house was designed with the organ in mind. This, this loft up here is quite a bit of square footage, jam-packed with uh, pipes. And I understand uh, from people that knew the LaForges that there was always a grand piano on the stage uh, also. As you can see, this actually is a stage, two steps up sure, to the yes. stage. And they would give performances here uh, with famous opera singers from New York who uh, would come up for their uh, vocal lessons and then spend the weekend and then they would put a performance on here in this room. The Hoffmans had the organ completely restored in time to play at their daughter's wedding. They considered a museum piece. In fact, it was appraised at $400,000. What else was here when you moved in? The room was pretty much uh, stripped. The fireplace uh, did not have the mantle that's presently there. That was a uh, flat stone wall, very unimpressive. Yet a large firebox, but nothing of grandeur around it. And we were lucky enough to find at an auction this uh, cut limestone mantelpiece that miraculously measured exactly the width of the firebox. There's a second fireplace at the end of this room that has a more country feel and features handmade tiles from Europe. It warms up a more casual sitting area that looks out to the pond. But the real drama in this room comes from the windows and balconies that overlook the stage. They were external uh, windows at one point, and what some of the work that we did do brought all of that inside the house, so they are just, uh, for all intents and purposes, decoration now, leading to a very dramatic uh, room in the house that we uh, turned outdoor space into indoor space. So this was originally all outside, and you enclosed this? Yes, it was. For 65 years, this was an outside courtyard. It snowed in here, it rained in here, and as we were looking at the house, my wife nonchalantly said, can you imagine if we put a glass roof on the top? What a thought. What At a that thought. moment, the house was sold. Yeah. We had to have it. Now, were these the original floors that lay in the courtyard before you covered it? Well, you know, we did everything in our power to make them look like they were the original floors in here, but they're not. We actually had to raise the floor about a foot and a half to two feet because to get uh, air conditioning and uh, heating ducts through this part of the house, there was rock immediately under this, so you don't go blasting in the middle of the house. So it became easier to raise the floor. The atrium is really the center of the home and offers easier access to the adjacent rooms, including the dining room. The dining room, as you can see, is very, very unique. It has on the walls what seem to be tapestries, but they're actually called poor man's tapestries. They were painted on burlap originally and obviously hung, we believe, in some house in Europe for many, many years because there's a lot of wear on them. And the burlap must have been very carefully removed, rolled up, folded up, whatever, brought here to the States. And uh, the LaForges actually built the dimensions of the dining room around the uh, tapestries. And then as you can see, the beautiful door that we have, this carved door, a museum piece. We don't know what its history is, what it was part of, but it's beautifully, beautifully carved. On the other side of the atrium is the master bedroom suite. 
This started out as a very plain, bleak room. Almost felt like you were in a tent. After much thought, I felt that something had to happen to break the space so that you had wall space and you had ceiling space. And I had my uh, architect design this very, very heavy molding that's probably made up of about 15 pieces of uh, various moldings and woods uh, to build it out so that we could actually put the lighting behind the molding and have it uh, glow up onto the ceiling. The French doors lead to a balcony overlooking the pond. The Hoffmans also updated the master baths. The Mrs. Bath features sandstone floors with light wood cabinetry and a spa tub that overlooks the spectacular grounds. We have five acres basically of gardens all around us. It's spectacular in the spring when all the azaleas and dogwoods are blooming. It's spectacular in the summer when we have the breeze off the pond. In the fall, all the trees turn golden and red and incredible colors. And in the winter, we have ice skating. It's a wonderful place to live. I would love to come back and see the leaves change. Thank you so much for the tour of the house and the yard. Thank you, it's my pleasure, of course. When we return, we'll take you inside Glenn's Bath, an unlikely place for a great design idea. Stay with us. Visit our website at hgtv.com.